Hi there, I'm Lewis Foster, a journalist in the Manx Radio newsroom, and thank you for choosing this edition of the Manx Radio newscast. A week today, the third Isle of Man government conference will get underway at the Comis Hotel. In previous years, it's been held at the Villa Marina in Douglas, and the lack of public transport routes to the new venue, and the fact it's taking place during the day in the middle of the working week, has come in for criticism. Cabinet Office Minister Kate Lord Brennan joined myself and Ben live on Manx Radio Breakfast this morning to address some of those concerns. There is, um, I think, much more detail than previous years, and it's been developed really for a business focus. Um, but actually, it really does contain topics of, of, of interest um, for the wider public, and I think will give government the chance to explain, um, you know, how these matters are being addressed and um, what progress is being made. So some of the key topics are around island security, immigration, migration, the the future of public services, as well as the the things that you would, I think, come to expect from the government conference, which are the updates from the chief minister and the treasury minister and the um, minister for department for enterprise as well. But I really encourage people to look at the full agenda, which is online at the the Island Plan, Island Man Government Conference website, so people can attend individual sessions or they can come for you know the whole the whole day on on each of the days it runs from 8 a.m till 5 p.m the big question as far as attendees are concerned why has the decision been taken to move this event to the comis hotel i think we always um decided that we would reflect on um you know how how the particular space for the government conference would you know was was working and um, we have got a pared down focus this year um you would be able to see from people who've attended previously that we've we've got um We've, we've got one one stage basically instead of having multiple things going on at one time that allowed us to have a different sort of venue and just to sort of change how we're doing things you know and, and actually I'm confident it will work really well and I, I would really encourage people to come along if they can't come along they can also watch the sessions that will be videoed um, and, and posted online afterwards. It's likely I suppose that they won't be able to come along last year we did have an evening session this year it's just two daytime sessions we have had someone on the text saying not everyone has the luxury of being able to take time out of their working week to attend the government conference why not an evening why not a weekend well um if you think back to some of the the things that we did after easter this year um when the council of ministers actually you know went out on on a sort of roadshow really in different parts of the island you know that was held on you know four four nights one after the other in different parts of the island purely in the evening at the time they announced that um roadshow which will also take place again in spring next year um, we were looking ahead already to this government conference, which it's you know it's it's been developed really um, in discussions with business, and you know I think that in, in many respects for for people that are wanting to engage in that way, it's perfectly you know fine and acceptable to have that in the working day. And you know we will do the council of ministers road shows, which are likely to be in the evening again next year. So it's you, you need to try and get things focused for different people, but you need to be able to de- um, deliver a full agenda, and and that's what's provided in this conference with a range of topics. Uh, there's been a lot of feedback about the government conference in terms of you know weekend sessions do you listen to feedback from the public about the event from the last couple of years do you take those thoughts on board we do and you know we we do reflect on the on the feedback we reflect on the 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 attendance we think about how to structure the agenda and the venue in light of the specific focus on topics so we do take account of that and i think that's why it's helpful that we've got the two different the two different um events you know we've got the the roadshow again next year but this year business focus comus hotel eight till five next tuesday and wednesday people can register or they can turn up on the day how are numbers looking at the moment minister they're looking good um i think that um the the latest figures that that I've been given um, is that there's that's you know sort of well well over 250 I think for the first day and, and getting getting beyond that as well for the second day so they're, they're going up each day and last year around 750 people attended over the two days that is less than one percent of the island's population so what has government done over the last year to try and attract more people to the conference well, I, I think that we do think about how to make... Uh, this is really about, actually, the public having a chance to talk to ministers and find out about what government is doing and, and you know, about the different issues that the island may may be dealing with in terms of, of challenges and opportunities. So there's there's clearly different ways of, the, of that happening. And but the fact that this is less than 1% of the island's population, the people who attended last year, do you think that shows people are disengaged with government at the moment? 
I think that um, that you can't expect there to be sort of, you know, full and high attendance at at every single point of engagement that that government offers. There was really high attendance too at the events run in April. And I think that there'll be good attendance for this event, particularly for the business community. There are things that you can do to, to help people attend these conferences though. And accessibility has been a major point. People saying bus routes to the comb is quite difficult. Yes, there's ample parking for, for motorists who, who have their the ability to get there. So have have those been of uh, public transport users been kept in mind? We have one text here that says the decision to move the conference to the Comis is disgusting, quite frankly. So, do you what what can we do to to encourage more people to come? So, if anybody has got any concerns about transport to the Comis, um, then what they can do is they can visit the the website. Also, they can get in touch with contact iomgc at gov. Dot im if they've they've got any queries or questions or need some assistance in terms of getting from the getting from where they're going from to the comis you know perhaps if they need to get from the bus stop to the comis then that can be arranged by contacting that, and that email address emailed in earlier to say actually you know you talk about active travel that's always a really big thing we hear the government talking about we should encourage people to engage in active travel more but actually who's able to walk to the comis hotel very few people i would imagine well actually i would say that there are some pretty big and serious issues that the government has things that we want to talk to the public about and also that the public want to ask ministers about so those sort of serious topics are on the agenda you know they are the main thing you know we we are always conscious of you know value and how people get from you know the events that government holds um and and that's why there is that option if people want to if they've got concerns they can get in touch but actually the the point of the agenda is is having a chance to talk about the serious issues of the day and how government is dealing with them. That's the main thing, really. Last year, the Alabama Government Conference cost in the region of £40,000 to stage with 750 attendees. That was at the Villa Marina. What are the predicted costs this year? They are, they're predicted to be lower. You know, there is a focus across government to have value for money and a, a strong focus on public finances. That's actually also one of the topics at, at the, the conference agenda. So we always do have like an eye to value, an eye to what is going to work best. Um, and your public finances is, is, is one of the, the points that will be talked about as well as the future of public services on the Isle of Man that's on the agenda. So lower costs we think this year even though it's now at a, a private venue as opposed to a government run venue like the Villa Marina the last couple of years. It's a much more focused down um, set up for the conference this year. Can I ask you about Government Transparency Minister because uh, we heard about those bus cancellations over the weekend. Uh, Isle of Man Transport said it was down to operational issues. We've contacted Government Saturday, Sunday and yesterday to get more clarity, more details on what those issues are. One of your fellow MHK's, Joni Farragher, has posted a Tim Ward written question and has written direct to the Infrastructure Minister and members because there's a lot of speculation on social media about uh, exactly what these issues are. So when it comes to transparency, I know you're not infrastructure, but you are part of Comin. Does this show that government are being transparent? Well, I think that when the Department for Infrastructure are able to come forward with something more specific about that that issue, um, they will do. Um, I'd also say that actually every year, and certainly twice this year already, your ministers and government officials are making themselves directly available to the public to um, address things in Q and A style situations to talk informally, and that's the sort of direct engagement that 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 is also important, as well as addressing specific, um, you know, operational issues. How valuable are those Q and A sessions in particular? Because they can get quite lively. Of course, it's it's all unfiltered. What do you take from that and the feedback that like came last year? Well, I think it's important actually because you. You're, often dealing with points about government policy or conf- uh, uh, you know or, or concerns about progress and what's happening next now if you think about it ministers get asked questions in in tin walls and keys mhks are out there talking to their constituents usually in a constituents capacity so what other sort of event or interaction allows the public to discuss directly with ministers and government officials not just the issues of the day but those affecting the island longer term. And I think that sort of direct engagement is, is really wonderful. So you can see, yes, they may get, you know, sort of quite quite heated, right? You because don't mind challenge. That, you know, I think that ministers care and the public care, right? So that 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 is all okay that that plays out in, in that forum. 
and actually I think it would be a shame if we if we didn't have that you saw how packed the Q&A sessions were last time every time there's something like this not only do um, your ministers sort of reflect and take on board the points but also usually when you've got a conference or something like that coming up it does also provide momentum for perhaps key announcements that government may may wish to to make or or communicate to the government that they're focusing on will there well. be any key announcements well, this year? can, can you give us any hints see. on that yeah it's okay yeah. you'll have to wait and see so just finally minister do you yourself look forward to events like this do you embrace this opportunity i do there's something about uh, you know the 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 road shows as well that happen in april and when you've got a, a conference agenda that you're thinking, yes, OK, well, I'm, I'm confident that it's the sort of agenda that the public and the, certainly we know this already from businesses they're interested in. It's topics that are important um, you know, across the board in different ways. It also gives a level of engagement by the, the workshops that are carried out. You know, there's, there's one on sort of honing the proposition, proposition of the Isle of Man. There's another one on the future of public services. This stuff matters, so I'm I am looking forward to it, and I hope that people can look at the agenda and attend, and they can register to do that on the on the website and get in touch if they've got the the sorts of queries that that I've mentioned. Thank you for making it to the end of the Manx Radio newscast. You are obviously someone with exquisite taste. May I politely suggest you might want to subscribe to this and a wide range of Manx Radio podcasts at your favourite podcast provider so our best bits will magically appear on your smartphone. Thank you.